Hello, welcome, I'm so happy you're here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what if you have the inner experience of feeling insecure that your specific person might want someone else. So this was a question um, that showed up in my community tab when I asked what people want me to uh, do videos about. And so this one is about, she said it's like about jealousy and envy, but essentially what she was asking is, what do I do if I feel insecure that my SP might want someone else or might find someone else attractive or there's other, it may be like a fear that that would happen or maybe that even is happening. What do I do if I personally feel insecure and I feel jealous of other people when it comes to my specific person? So I'm going to dive into this whole topic in this video. Before I jump in, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel in the corner or below. Also know that I offer lots of self-study manifesting courses. All of my courses are linked below. The course that's going to be most like this video is called Free Yourself, and it's in the specific person section down there. And that course really helps us unravel our triggers. There's typical triggers we have in relationships. And in that course in particular, I cover the trigger of jealousy, the trigger of feeling abandoned, and the trigger of feeling not good enough or insecure. So. If you like this video and you want to dive deeper into this practice in your own life, you can check out that course. It's it's by far one of my most popular courses and people really rave about it. I don't think there's a lot of things out there that are similar to that course, honestly, helping you really unravel your triggers. So, all right, so let me dive into this topic. This is a good one. There's a lot there and I'm sure a lot of people can relate. So even if you have built up your self-love and you've built up your self-concept and you're no longer living in an experience of lack when it comes to your manifestation or your specific person or love, it's not uncommon for us to have these um, triggers or spikes of feeling insecure, spikes of feeling jealous, spikes of feeling afraid that our specific person might want someone else. So. Regardless of the situation you are in, let's look at what to do if you feel jealousy and insecurity. So the first thing to do is just to know that, okay, you're probably running some sort of old program from your past. And we all can relate to this. We all have these old programs, which essentially are old fears that arise in us about um, relationships. So where our old programs come from, basically 99% of the time? No, I don't know if that's the right statistic, but a, a huge place where our old programs come is from our past, which is our childhood. And the way that this works is we are born into a family and there's just particular family dynamics going on within the family. There's particular relating dynamics going on in the family. And so how your parents related to each other, if, if you are in a household with both parents, how your parents related to each other has a great impact on what you start to expect for relationships, as well as how you are related to from your parents. And if we have wounds or traumas around not being chosen, uh, feeling abandoned, feeling like we are left for someone else, we can play out certain dynamics in our romantic relationships. I personally have experienced this and I will, I will actually share about this. I haven't um, gone this deeply into this particular wound. It's interesting, you know, so as you guys probably know, I have a background in psychology. I really know my, my psychological history very, very well. I've had lots and lots of therapy. So I understand my own dynamics in this way. And personally, I used to have uh, very much so a fear of abandonment and it was interlinked with some jealousy and insecurity. And essentially the belief was someone else was gonna be chosen over me. Now, when I look back into my psychology and into my early childhood and, and my upbringing, I can pinpoint where this came from in my history. Again, I've just done a lot of therapy. So where it came from for me where I think it came from, I don't have proof proof, but where I think it came from is when I was two years old, I had uh, twin brothers who came onto the scene. I have twin brothers. They are two years younger than me. So they are twins. I'm not twins with them. They are twins. And when I was two years old, they were born. And when they were born, they were actually really sick. They were premature and they were 
uh, pretty sick and they were in the hospital. And I think at that time in my life, when I was two years old, there was a big disruption that happened in my life. And part of that disruption meant my mom was really not around as much anymore because she was probably mainly in the hospital with my brothers as they were, because they were in the hospital for a month or maybe longer after they were born. And so there was something in me that, uh, you know, and, and so this may be specifically where this wound came from. And there may have been other very similar wounds that came after that, where I felt like I was no longer being chosen where I felt like I was um, being abandoned, where I felt like someone else, these two little twins, <laughs> were getting the love that used to be mine. And, um, you know, of course I have, a, or maybe it's not of course, but I have a really good relationship with my brothers, my twin brothers. I, of course, I say of course, but again, maybe it's not of course, but I did really love them when I was a kid, but I think there was some abandonment that happened in that experience of having two little twins come on the scene when I was just two years old and feeling like my mom was kind of no longer around. So this is an example of trauma that we, we can call it trauma, we can call it whatever we want, a wound, whatever you want to call it, but this is an example of something that, um, that can create a belief system inside of us that then goes on and starts forming your later relationship. So of course we are manifesting from what we are, we are manifesting who and what we are and our beliefs. So if you have some sort of trauma in there or wound in there around being left or feeling like you're not being chosen, someone else is being chosen, it's not uncommon for us to have this experience that this woman was speaking about in the comment, the, the experience of feeling like I'm not going to be chosen. Uh, he might want someone else. He might want someone who's better than me. You know, I'm scared someone's better than me. I'm jealous of other women. I'm, I'm scared that other people are better than me in some way. So this is really common. Now, as I've said in other videos, when I've talked about psychology and my history and your history and how this all works, I don't actually believe it's necessary for us to go back and mine up where the original wound came from. I don't think that is necessary at all. And the reason I don't think it's necessary, I of course did that, I did that work, but I kind of did that work before I came to manifesting in spirituality. You know, I hit a dead end with that work, which is why I'm no longer a traditional psychotherapist. And I, I chose to become a manifesting expert and a um, more spiritual oriented type of, um, you know, that's how I guide people now. I'm still licensed as a psychotherapist, but I chose this other pathway. And that's because we change based on who and how and what we believe we are in this moment. This moment and this moment and this moment, every now moment is an opportunity to become a new person. It's, it's an opportunity for you to um, step into a new self-concept. You don't have to know what happened to you in the past to do that. You can, and if those memories come up, the best thing to do is inner child work, which is show up for that little girl or boy that felt abandoned back there or felt like they weren't chosen back in the past. In your imagination, imagination, you show up for that part of you here and now through inner child work. And that's gonna do a lot of the healing in the now. And eventually when we show up for ourselves over and over and over again, we stop feeling these same traumas that we felt when we were a kid. So let me link my inner child playlist if you wanna dive deeper into that. Okay, so continuing on this journey though, this is like, this is kind of a winding journey of a, of a video, but I, I think it's really important. So the thing to recognize first and foremost, if you feel scared that you are not gonna be chosen by your specific person, it really just means one thing, which is your own self-concept has not stabilized enough in the experience of, I am amazing, I am chosen, I am always chosen, I am absolutely adored, I am cherished, I am chosen. So this of course is the practice of self-love and it really is just 
a practice. It's a practice of telling yourself I am statements about who you are and who you want to be. It's about feeling the actual love that you are. It's about feeling um, the love you feel for yourself, the love that you de feel you deserve. So I just did a video on how to shift your self-concept and this dives deep into essentially how to really anchor in a practice of self-love so it actually changes who you are. Because the truth is, if you are experiencing the, something with a specific person where you are scared they're gonna choose someone else and maybe they are choosing someone else because of course you're manifesting that, the thing to do first and foremost is to recognize, okay, if I am continuously coming into the fear that I'm gonna be left, that's my own self-concept that needs to be changed. I need to keep my self-love practice going so that I can really, really land in a very deep knowing that I'm not gonna be left, that I'm not gonna be abandoned, that no one else is going to be chosen except for me. You can do this work. I have personally done this work. I used to be a person who always felt like someone else was gonna be chosen, who felt jealous, who felt insecure in relationships. I used to be that person. And through self-love and self-love only, I have landed in being a woman who knows she is gonna be chosen by her man. And that has consistently been true for several years now. Even with different relationships, I have landed in the knowing that I, of course, will be chosen. And I have gotten that reflection from men from the outside world. One more thing I wanna say about this. Be careful, if you are in this position of feeling insecure, be careful not to think that it's all about changing your specific person. I've had people ask me this in my comments and it's important to address. So essentially, what people think is, well, if I have an SP who maybe isn't committing to me as much as I want, or maybe they aren't choosing me, and maybe they are kind of choosing other people while they're choosing me or just choosing other people instead of me, we can think that it means I need to recreate the specific person. Not necessarily, and really that wouldn't be the primary mode I would personally go about it. If a specific person is not giving you the attention you want from that person, and if they are not showing up in the relationship the way you want, I would have a look first and foremost at your self-concept. Do you believe they are going to show up for you in this way? Do you believe you are worthy of this attention and love? Do you feel claimed? Do you feel like you're absolutely magnificent? Do you have that level of confidence? If you have that level of confidence, that is enough to shift the dynamic, okay? So it's always coming back to the self as I always talk about. And this is how, how to do it. Thank you guys so much for being with me in this video. I love being here with you. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel, you like the video, and you comment below. I'll see you soon.